Good morning. We'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do, because everything you do is good, Lord. Help us now to look into your book and to understand it. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, I wanted to show you this again. Um, uh, God put Israel right in that center of these three huge land masses to serve, to serve the bread, the bread of life, which is, which is the word. That's where he put them. Um, but the bread has to be broken. And that is something that none of us like. We don't like to be broken. But that's what this, the story of the Bible, especially through the Jewish people, it shows us that. We, we are to be broken. And um, that's, humi that's humiliation. That's why the land is called Canaan. That's what Canaan means, to be humiliated. And none of us like that. So this is why last week we dealt with a candlestick and the candlestick deals with understanding. This is an understanding that God has to give us to, to come to that understanding. And uh, look what it says here. We looked at that word last week, against, twice that's mentioned, against. The candlestick was lit and it lit up the place against and uh, me and against is the opposite, or the opposite side of the candlestick. If the candlestick is on the south, the table of showbread is on the north. So that, what that is saying is this, God is highlighting the bread. The spotlight is on the bread. The bread is important. And uh, look what it says here in John 12, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So this is a difficult understanding. And a lot of us, us Christians, have a hard time dealing with this. Dying. It's, it's very difficult because we have a hard time understanding it. Um, but look at this. In Acts 2, 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. I always had a problem with us, why fire? But that, because that's what that means, understanding. Unless the Lord gives us understanding, we cannot even begin to speak. Because that's what happened to the church when they, when, when they came, when the Holy Spirit came down upon them and filled them, then it says they begin to speak. And look what it says here. As the Spirit gave them utterance. That word utterance is a spoken word. That's when you speak, when you have understanding. And notice also in the Old Testament, the only person that could light the candlestick was the high priest, Aaron, or the high priest. He's the only one that was authorized to do that. And, and people got in trouble in the Old Testament for doing things that the high priest was uh, authorized to do. Uh, if you don't do it that way, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, Uzziah was one of those people that became a leper because he went in there against, he thought he could do it. And uh, this is showing us it is Aaron. He's the, it is God who gives us his understanding. If we don't have that understanding, uh, I mean, we, there's no other way we can get that. And that understanding, and so that's what we're going to be dealing with today. So the, I thought the, the appropriate uh, ver, uh, verse to deal with would be Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we all know that verse, and it's a wonderful verse, but it's telling us this. It, this is the only way you're going to have it done. It's the only way it's going to happen. Um, favor. You're saved or made whole through grace, and then you're persuaded um, by faith. And I often go back to, to that point when I got saved, 
And I'm still amazed at how sitting there reading the Bible, I believed it. I just read the Bible and, and it says, 1 John 5, 13, I read it and it says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And that minute, I believed it. And I'm amazed at the fact that I believed it. That to me is, I says, how did that happen? How does that happen? It's because God just turned the switch on. He turned the switch on and it's the grace of God. That's what did it. He did it. Um, it's unmerited favor. I, I don't bring anything to the table. He just did it he, because he had favor. And I, I don't deserve it. That's what that means, unmerited. I don't deserve it. And yet, he caused me to believe. He caused me to have faith, uh, to be persuaded. And it says, it is, the, it is a gift of God. He does this. It's his gift. And not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's what's so hard to deal with, to understand. This is why we dealt with, yes, last week with the candlestick, because they're about to start off on this road of life, as it were, on the wilderness. And um, they haven't started yet. 40 years of wilderness, they're gonna, and we're about to start. And so here you have, you gotta have this understanding. As you go through life, you're gonna have to die. Um, and that's very difficult. And I think this is why, why does, does the Lord cause us at this point to bring the candlestick into the room to shed light on the bread? It's got to be broken. So it's by grace. And then we left off here last week, verse 14. It says, Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel. Separate them. Thus, in this way, you will separate the children, of the, separate the Levites. Because um, he's about to show us that you can't do it. You, you got to get this through your head. You can't do it. Somebody else is going to have to do it for you. And that is very difficult, folks. Especially the Jewish people. They have, they've had a very hard time dealing with this. But so do we. So he says, Here, here's how you're going to separate them. The Levites shall be mine. The ones that are joined, the Levites, they're going to be mine because I cleansed them. And remember, we dealt with that last week. Now, when they start off, when the book of Numbers starts off, because it's all about this, this hike through the wilderness or life in the wilderness, he deals with the boundaries. He says, the boundary is if I, because you're mine. He established a relationship. Remember, we pointed this out again that the nation of Israel, God says, I've dealt with no other nation like I've dealt with you. I've taken you to be mine, just like a man takes a woman to be his wife. He's taken them. So establish a relationship, and he says, if I establish a relationship, that means that you can transgress it, you can break it. And that's why we had to deal with that woman. Uh, uh, if thou be defiled, thy thigh will rot. He says, you're gonna lose power. The thigh is the power, the strength. You're gonna lose your strength. And that's why I point that out. Immediately, we dealt with that. And then the next thing we dealt with was the Nazarite vow. But here's how to gain that power back. Power with God. The Nazarite, but the Nazarite is works. Okay, and the Nazarite is showing us, if you fail and you're gonna fall, you're gonna fail because you cannot rely upon your own strength. It's gotta be by grace because look, he says, this is what, he did this to the Nazarite. The Nazarite is, I mean, the Levites are gonna be mine because I washed them, I sanctified them, I justified them. The Lord has to do that. And then you can do the work. Otherwise, if you try to do works, it's not gonna happen. Because look, by works was this. We saw the, the Nazarite, he was told not to touch, you can't touch dead people. Not to cut. You can't cut your hair. And then not to drink wine or even eat a grape. Can you imagine going through a vineyard and not being able to eat one grape? It's pretty, it's pretty difficult. What that shows us, that's by works. He couldn't do it. 
the strongest man in the Bible, which was Samson, couldn't do it. That's what the Lord is showing us here. If you try to do it by works, you can't. It's impossible. After that, after what? After that the Lord has washed, sanctified, and justified, then you can serve. After that shall the Levites go, on, go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering. After that, he's talking to, to, to Moses, then, then you can do this. But otherwise, you're going to be in trouble because it's got to be by grace. Okay? And so, for they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel, instead of such as open the womb. So, he's, it's just all about, he has got to be done by grace. Instead of such as open the, every womb. So the first, and we looked at Samson, I put Samson, he shall begin. Samson was a judge, and remember uh, Manoah and his wife, they, they were told they were going to have a baby. So he's the first baby, he's the firstborn. Samson was the firstborn. And so... Samson was born and he was very strong and but he failed too. He had so many problems Samson did. He was a firstborn, he he was a strength. But notice what the Lord says in Exodus 4:22. He says this to Pharaoh. He says, "And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my first is my son, even my firstborn, Israel." And so God is going to show us through Israel how the firstborn cannot do it. They try to do it by the law. They try to do it by works. And they're still trying. Israel is still trying to do it by works. As soon as they can, they're going to rebuild the temple and go back to sacrificing. You don't need that. It's already, the sacrifice has already been done. They don't need to, but that, that's... So God says, instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me, the Levites? He says, because the firstborn were his. And he tells us, they're mine. My firstborn is Israel, but I don't want to take them. I'm not going to accept them. Israel, the sons, his people. He says, no, I don't want those. Instead, he wants the son, and he's already given us a clue. <clears throat> the son, <clears throat> excuse me. That's going to be out of, out of Israel is going to come a son. So he's already given us a clue. That's not their, he doesn't want their strength. And that's what he wants from us. I don't want your strength. I want you to rely on somebody else. Because your strength, you can never do it. You will never be able to do it. Israel is a prince and that gives you again a, a clue. A, the son. But because he was, he was washed, sanctified, justified, and he becomes a living bread, volunteered. And that's what Jesus did. He volunteered himself for this. But the Lord points this out. He's already cleansed them, the Levite. He did it by himself. He just did it by himself. And then he shows us how the people, we saw that how the people, he says, here's how you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to put your hand on the Levite, and we saw that last week. Put your hands on the Levite, you transfer identification to the Levite, and then whatever work you wanna be done, somebody else is gonna to have to do it for you. So the Levite, and the Levite then was to put their hands on the bullocks, or, the, or those young calves, which is a picture of Jesus. And then those, so Israel as a whole would put their hands on the Levites because the Lord says the Levites are mine. I'm taking them instead of your strength. So now put your hand on them and transfer your identification to them. And then the, the Levites turn around and put their hands on the bulls. And then the bulls or the, or the calves <clears throat> are offered up. Those, that's the sin offering and that's the burnt offering. Both were burnt. So that's taken care of, and that represents love and forgiveness through somebody else is put on your account. And the 
Israeli people should have seen this, but they don't see it. You know, they're, they're showing us, the, the Bible shows us this, but they don't see it. And we can fall into that. And this was all pointing up, this was pointing to the fact that it's going to be a substitutionary sacrifice. This is what this is. It's going to be done through somebody else. This is, is pointing to Jesus. This is what it's pointing to. If only they would have, but they didn't see it. They're blind. The Bible says they're blinded. So the work, he will do the work. The prince, he will do the work. And so we got to rely upon that constantly. And, and folks, even as a Christian, when we sin, we get disappointed. And we want to give up. He says, I did it again. But God is just reminding you that you can't do it on your own. Your own strength will not help you even now as many years as you've been a Christian you're gonna to have to rely upon him even now so take his life and once you start once you start seeing that as a wow because first when I first got saved folks life was like up and down up and down up and down I mean I I've, I've, I confess and I sin again I confess and I sin again I says I must not be a Christian how can I be how can I be sinning I must I'm give up, forget, don't go to church, don't read the Bible, that's not for me. But then I wouldn't feel right. I says, ah, I got to read the Bible. And then I, and one day by chance, I mean, this is early on, one day by chance, I confessed it. And as soon as I confessed it, I felt pretty good. I says, huh, oh, is that what it takes? Yeah, wow. And at that point, I started learning. But it's a, it's a lifelong thing. And this is what the Lord is showing us here. He's got to give us this understanding that it's a substitutionary. Um, it's not to say that you can sin willy-nilly, but rather than always go back to him. That's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine both man and beast, on the day that I smoked every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. Look what he says. He says, he's pointing out the fact that they, they're rightfully his. The firstborn are his. That was Israel. They were his. But, and he's going to show us, I sanctified them for myself. I did it. And how did he do that? Well, he says, okay, somebody's going to die for you. The firstborn of, the, of Israel. So what did he take? He took the firstborn of Egypt. He killed the firstborn of Egypt and says, okay, somebody died for you. The firstborn of Egypt, they died for you. So you're mine. But then they wanted to rely on their, on their strength. That's why there's... Um, Look what it says. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord that's what he said in Egypt when he killed the firstborn of the Egyptians because he's got to show us the gods of Israel of Egypt this is these are the gods of Egypt the gods of Egypt or the gods of the world this is the way they think it's by strength my strength I'll do it by I'll, my bootstraps, it's my schooling, it's my smartness, it's my intelligence, you know. I'm getting this done because I am, you know, I did it. I did it my way, as the song says. And God says, no. So he killed them. He killed all the firstborn. He killed their strength. That's what he's showing us. In Egypt, he killed their flesh. That's the way he feels about them. He says, and that's the way I feel about my people, too. I will not accept that from my people. The world says, we'll get it done by strength. And he says, the church cannot go and do it like the world. He says, look what I did to them. I'll do it to you, too. I'm going to do it to you, too. So, but what says the answer of God? This is in Romans, Paul is saying, Elijah, when Elijah in the Old Testament confronted the prophets of Baal, he got into the, he was depressed because God didn't kill uh, Jezebel. And he says, I'm the only one, I'm the only one serving God. 
And look what the Lord says. What says the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, and Paul says, even so, at, then at this time, present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Even so, God says, no, I reserve to myself, even so right now, it looks like a whole nation of Israel is gone and they've gone the other way. And that's what happens even now, folks, because we look at Israel and Israel looks like they're going to be lost completely. God says, no, because I have chosen them. And he told us, he told us that before already, because according to the election of grace, because he loved the peop he loved the fathers. He says, I love, and he promised Abraham. And so God is doing it by him, by his favor. It's his favor that he upholds these people. So he'll do the same for us when we trust him, when we trust his grace, it's his grace. And when we come to that point, oh, you can't help but love him. God, why do you do this? He says, that's the way he is, he's good. Um, and I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. See, he says, I, I, I have taken a substitutionary sacrifice instead of is the sons of Israel, the children of Israel. I've taken them. The firstborn of Israel, he says, I've taken them instead, not your strength. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel. So not only does he take the Levites, he says, I don't want the firstborn, I want the Levites, they're going to replace the firstborn. And then he takes the Levites and he gives them as a gift to Aaron. He says, here, these are going to be yours to help you do the work. There's work to be done, but you cannot do it yourself. That work of salvation cannot be done by you. Somebody else has to do it for you. So the Lord says, I'm going to take the Levites and they're going to be the workers for Aaron. And Aaron is the priest, okay? Aaron is the, is the high priest. He's the, and that's Jesus. So we are the workers. We're going to be given, we are given to Jesus, okay? That's who the Levites are. To do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel. See? So they're the ones that are going to be working. They're going to atone for you. The Levites are doing the work for Israel. So the Levites are going to be doing the work. They're bond servants. They're going to be slaves. That's what they are. That there be no, break, no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. Because you could never come. This is the... I just heard a man, there's, there's a thing going on right now, folks, called the Emergent Church. And there's a lot of speakers, a lot of big time speakers, and they're carry, they have big mega churches, and it's the Emergent Church. And, and, and they, they're not taking the literal meaning of the Word of God. They're changing it, and they're saying that they're changing things. They're false prophets. And so they don't see this, the, the infinite holiness of God. If you come near him, you're going to die. You, you cannot, we cannot come. We are sinners or defiled. To come before his presence, somebody else has to do it for us. This is what this is showing us. Somebody else has to do it for us because otherwise we, we, when we come near him, <clears throat> we're going to die. This is what the, the Levites, they're the ones that could encamp. Uh, we saw that. They were encamping around the tabernacle. And God says, this is for your own good, to protect you from getting near me. Because you can die. If you come near the children of Israel, look at this. It's, it's pointing this out. It, it just keeps... Rem when you come near me, the only one that can come near me is the Levites were the sons of the children of Israel. They were, but they were not the firstborn. They, were, they had replaced the firstborn and they were authorized because God just did it of his own accord. He just sanctified them. He cleansed them. He washed them. He says, I did it myself 
and they're going to be serving me. And so they were given to Aaron, the high priest. And look what he says here. Deuteronomy 4, 24 says, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. And there's a picture in our universe that shows us that. God is a consuming fire. Even in the daytime, we cannot see the sun with our eyes because you can hurt your eyes if you stare at it. And that's a, a good picture of what God is. God says, you cannot come near me. Um, I heard the other day somebody said that, you know, that you could get to the sun. Um, you could travel to the sun, but you'd have to do it by night. I says, right. <laughs> that's, that's not going to happen. Um, and Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according to all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So they see that Israel, Israel is big on doing what Moses said. They just lack the understanding. <clears throat> They're big on doing the works. We're going to see that throughout um, this as we take, start the hike. And I'm, folks, look, we're already in chapter 8 and it's still a couple of chapters before. They start on chapter 10. They start the walk in the desert. Okay, we're, this is all in preparations, and the Lord is showing us you got to you got to have this understanding. Bef and this is why the, li the lighting of the candlestick just now happened. Um, did to the Levites according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, and I can imagine they're doing all this. Remember how you had to wash him, you had to shave him, you had to do all this work. They had to bring the bullock. They had to bring the flour with the oil and all that. It was, all these rites had to be done. And so they're doing them. And it's a, I'm glad that they do that. Because we can, who study the Bible, we can go back and look at these details and get all this insight. That's the only way. I'm glad. Though they didn't understand it, we do. So did the children of Israel unto them to perform, to do all this work. Okay, now look at this. There's a, there's a wonderful story in the Old Testament about the Nathins. It's, they're pronounced Nathin, Nathin. The Nathin are temple servants. And if you read in Joshua, when they go into the land, there was, a, there was the Jebusites, no, uh, Gibeonites. The Gibeonites, they came and lied to Joshua. They says, we're from a faraway country. Remember? And they brought, they, had, they said, look at our bread. It's all moldy. When we, when we took off on the road, it was fresh bread. And look at our shoes. They're worn out. We've been traveling a long distance. They were lying. They were lying because they lived right over the hill. They were afraid of Joshua and his army because they heard what he did to, to Jericho. And so they were lying. And when jo and Joshua, the Bible says that Joshua didn't ask counsel of the Lord. So and so doing, when he found out that the Gibeonites were, had lied, he said to them, "You and they had already made a, a covenant with them." So Joshua says, "For that, from now on, you're always going to be hewers of wood and drawers of water. You're going to be servants to the temple of God. You're going to have to serve the temple forever. For having done that." And you know what? That's a good thing. That's a great thing. Because they were going to be slaves. From now on, you're going to be slaves to the temple. What do I do? You're going to be having to cut wood for the priests. You're going to have to be drawing water for them. That's what you get for lying. But you look at that story and it says, Can you imagine being a slave to God? That's the best thing that could happen. The Nathin. Nathins. Because look what happens. This is Ezra. Ezra. 724. This is after, folks, this is like 800 years later. They've already come, gone to Babylon, come back, and look what, is, look what the king of, uh, of Persia said when he gave letters to, to Ezra. He says, give them this. They, 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 the people can give you so much gold, and they give you silver, and whatever cattle you need for the sacrifices of your God. Here's the letter that authorizes this. And he says this, also, we certify you that touching any of the priests and the Levites and singers, porters, Nathins, 
or ministers of this house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or custom upon them. What a blessing. It turned out to be a blessing. If you're a slave of God, wow. This is what this shows us, folks. Because look what happens here. 1724. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. This is they. The nothing. That's us. We're the nothing. Those that serve God. That's who we are. And the Levites were purified, and they, and they washed their clothes, and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord. So they were offered. The Levites were offered. That's going to be the people that are going to be um, taking a place. They're going to be serving for Israel. Okay, this is what, they didn't understand that, but that's what's happening. And remember, the wave offering was when you took a piece, especially the breast, or you took the, 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 the leg, the power, and you offer them to God. God, this is your piece. And the Lord would say, yes, give them to Aaron. So that offering, when it says, in Aaron, offered them as an offering before the Lord. You look at that word offering, it says, it's a wave offering. It's, it, they're given to God, and God in turn so turns around and says, give them to, a, uh, to Aaron. And so we've been given to Aaron. So they were given to Aaron as servants. And, uh, and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. So this was done for them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons, and the Lord had, as the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. So it, it was done. Then now they can do the work, the bondage work, the slave work. And folks, it sounds like, an, uh, when, when, like we just saw the nothing. If... If you were made a slave of God, it sounds like a bad thing to be a slave, but it's not. We just saw that it's not. It's, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is that which belongeth unto the Levites. Okay, we heard before that when you served as a high priest, you served from, you started at age 30, and that's what time Jesus started, and you served until you were 50. So you served 20 years. 20 years stands for time served. And that's what the military does in the United States. If you serve 20 years, you receive a pension. You know, it's a time served. You serve your country, so you serve God, and that's it. You did your service. That was the high priest, and he was to retire. But look at the, the thing. From 20 and 5 years old and upward, they're going to start serving 5 years earlier, younger. The Levite starts 20, uh, 25, at 25, not at 30, at 25. They shall go in to wait upon the service of the, co of the tabernacle of the congregation. That's when they start doing the bondage, the slave work at that time. And look what Paul says. Paul uses the same word. Paul, a servant of, he says a slave. Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, called to be of an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. If you look at all his letters, he's constantly referring to himself as a slave. Paul says, I'm a slave. I'm a slave. I'm a, a nothing. Um, look what it says here. But then he says this in 1 Corinthians 7, 21. Art thou called being a servant, a slave? Care not for it. Don't be concerned about that. But if thou, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. So I, I uh, put those words being in blue to tell you that those are italicized. So you can read it like, or thou called a servant or a slave, or is the Lord, or that, that is called in the Lord a slave, a servant. It says, 
don't be concerned about that. It's a good thing. And I wonder this, folks. I put this picture here because look, it sounds like a bad thing. Like, can you imagine the Lord coming up to you and says, you wanna be my slave? Most of us would probably say no, you know? I says, no, I don't wanna be a slave to anybody. But most of the people, I, can, I was thinking of Matthew when the Lord came up to him and says, follow me. And here's this big chunk of money he's making. And he's gonna turn around and, and follow this man? He did it. And I was wondering, what causes us to do that? Why do we do that? Uh, I think it's, I don't know, folks. I think it's the grace of God. There's just, I mean, that day when I, when I was reading the Bible and I found that verse in the Bible and I started crying, because pure joy, I thought, nobody has ever told me this. I think that's the grace of God. He opens your eyes and then he tells you to follow him. I believe that that is his grace also. That is his grace. And from the age of 50 and f years old, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. So they will go from 25 to 50 also. And he says, shall serve no more. You will be no, you'll be no bondman anymore at that point. When you turn 50, and I was thinking, why 50? Folks, 50, remember 50? That's the jubilee. 50 is the jubilee. That means you're set free. There comes a point when you're set free and it's not a bondage anymore. Folks, I enjoy preparing the lesson. It's an enjoyment for me. If Brother Best told me I couldn't do it no more, I would be sad. And I would probably start looking someplace else where I could teach it. It just, because it's in me. I couldn't be quiet. The only time I'm going to be quiet is when I die. I, I praise the Lord it, that be done because look and he says but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge and shall know and shall do no service it becomes that word there minister is to worship it becomes a worship instead of slavery that's what it becomes it becomes at 50, you would retire, and now you go in to help, but you're no longer doing the service because you're 50, you're old. So now, you're just ministering, you're just worshiping. It's a worship. You're still doing the same thing, but it's a worship. Isn't it amazing? This is what the says. So 25, and look at this. I, again, I looked at that word 20. So 20 is five years plus, it's five plus. What is the thing about five? Five is grace, folks. It is pure grace. That's what that shows us. So after you do your service, after you do, when, when the Lord called Matthew and Matthew followed the Lord, after a while, they, all, they were all serving the Lord. But at a certain point in time, like when Peter says, Lord, I'm not worthy to be crucified up straight up, crucify me upside down. At that point, it, he, was, he was not enslaved anymore. And that's what Paul says as well. Thus shall they do unto the Levites touching their charge. This is what they, they're going to serve. And that's what I think it is. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I think that applies to our works as well. It's all by grace. He gives us a grace to believe, and then he gives us the grace to serve. We are more, of, of all people, most blessed. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for um, your grace, Lord, that is freely given, unmerited favor. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, help us now to prepare our hearts to receive your word. We, we ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is another God. Amen.